Our presenters, Anton Dukravets and Jodis Rachmet, love traveling. There are tens of thousands of kilometers behind their backs. This time, they decided to visit different parts of Kazakhstan in just a month to learn more about the country's cultural heritage and rich nature. In the last episode, Anton visited the beautiful lakes of eastern Kazakhstan, Makakol and Zaisan. He also visited the most mysterious place of the region, Kain Karish Valley. Joldez was in southern Kazakhstan. On the first day, she visited the mysterious cave of Akmeshit. Now ahead of her is the boundless steppe. What can be more beautiful than this? Every traveler discovers and finds something new in every trip. Well, if we talk about nature, of course, the nature here is barren. It is very different from other places. I was in the south of Kazakhstan in the Moinkum desert, and it may seem that the desert is so uninteresting. But it can be various, in the morning and at night. At night you can freeze, and in the afternoon you suffer from the heat. But the oases here are so beautiful, they are amazing. Today the film crew will go to the ancient city of Otinra. There are many stories, legends and contradicting historical facts about this place. We decided to learn if there are true and dedicate a whole episode to this ancient city. This trip for us is a journey into history, and it begins with the Great Silk Road because it shaped the history of many ancient and medieval cities on the territory of modern Kazakhstan. The trade caravans made stops on their way, built caravanserais, and then settlements appeared in these places that later grew into large cities. The Aris and Sirdarya merged together and create an Otorar oasis. There was a number of thriving cities in this area before the 13th century. Here and there you can see the ruins of medieval settlements, but the most impressive are the ruins of Otura. Since the ancient times, the Otura oasis has been one of the largest centers of urban civilization of the region. Archaeological research confirms this. The first settlements appeared here in the 1st century BC, when the history of most medieval cities started. The history of Otorar is associated with the great Kai Khan. Otorar is associated with the history of Genghis Khan's dynasty. Today, Otorar is an open-air museum and is very unique. And of course, as soon as you arrive here, you see the entrance gate, the walls of the ancient city. You see these loopholes, which the city defenders used to protect the fortification. The ancient settlement is located near the village of Talapti. It is 120 kilometers northwest of Shimkent. Travel time is about two and a half hours. Otara had a good geographical location. On the one hand, there are agricultural oasis of Central Asia. On the other hand, the steppe which once belonged to the Deshti Kipchak nomads. Different cultures met and mixed here for many centuries. The ancient settlement is mentioned by many travelers, scholars and geographers of the Middle Age. Mahmoud Kashgari, Rashid Adin, Rujiban, Juvaini wrote about it. Otara was first mentioned in the 9th century by historian Atabari. Before that, the city was called Farab. <laughs> The Kangyu settlement lies at the foundation, because a Kangyu coin was found here. The city is about 2,000 years old, it is 80 meters high, and that is only the central part of the city. 
Its area is 20 hectares. This is the Shakristan and this is the citadel. And the Rabat is 150 hectares. This is one of the major cities of the Silk Road. It is conveniently located. There was a road connection between Otara, Shash, current Tashkent, Vergana and Zogd. These were the main cities along the southern route of the Silk Road. Settled artisans, traders, poets and musicians lived here. Goods from all over the world could be found in the local markets. Gradually, Ottawa grew into an important economic and cultural centre of Central Asia. Ottawa is one of the most ancient cities of Central Asia. In the Arab sources, the city is called Farab. The first settlement emerged in the 8th century. By the 12th century, it was already a large trade centre for handicrafts and darts, with palaces, caravanserais and city districts. The country's oldest city has long been covered by dust, prickly bushes and its main inhabitants are the steppe spiders, snakes and scorpions. Looking at the remaining ruins, it is difficult to believe that it was once a powerful fortification. However, the remains found by archaeologists unwittingly recreate the images of the once existent civilization. Otera was once surrounded by high clay walls. The city could only be reached through a gate with a drawbridge. According to scientists, about 10,000 people lived here in the 12th century. The center of the city, or the citadel, was where the city ruler lived. The nobility lived in the Shakristan, artisans and commoners lived in Rabat. Otera is one of the most significant medieval cities of Kazakhstan. Historians started studying the city from the end of the 19th century. Veselovsky was the first researcher. Then professional excavations were carried out in 1902-1904 by Cherkasov. And then major excavations were conducted by scientist Basht, one of the founders of Kazakhstan's archaeology. According to a legend, great scientist and philosopher Abu Nasr Farabi was born in Ottawa. He spent his teenage years here, then he left the city to travel the world. He wrote over 160 philosophical treatises over the years. He introduced the Arab culture to the world of Aristotle, who in the East was named the first teacher. Abu Nasr al-Farabi is remembered as the second greatest teacher. Otara was a treasured trove of culture. It was home for astronomer and mathematician Abbas Zalkari linguist and geographer Iskak Al-Farabi and holy Aristan Baba. Otera still attracts many tourists with the unresolved mysteries. Disputes over the Otera library are ongoing for many years now. Many historians believe that the vault of books was burned during the siege of the city in the 13th century. But there are those who believe that the Otera residents managed to save a big part of the ancient manuscripts and they were buried down somewhere. But whether this library actually existed remains a mystery. There is a belief that the library existed, but researchers don't look for it specifically. But we should because we know that mentioning of Alexandrian library existed. Since Otara was burned down, there is a possibility that the remains of the library are here. Because famous scholars and theologians lived here, especially in the heyday of the city between the 8th and 11th centuries. So where does the legend come from? According to Kazakh archaeologist Kamal Arkishev, this myth was born in the late 1970s, when one journalist wrote about it in his article. This is what he wrote. Scientists, wise men, skilled musicians, foretellers, jewelers lived in Ottera. The city had a large madrasa, a bazaar, a blacksmith shop, a bath, mosques, shops, workshops and a library. In terms of its scale and importance, the Ottera library can be compared to the Alexandria library. 
archaeologists would be happy to find the ancient repository of books, but so far all the efforts have been in vain, and today remains a mystery yet to be resolved. Taking into account the weather conditions is important when traveling to southern Kazakhstan. In the summer, the temperature can reach 45 degrees Celsius. There is not a single tree around. Therefore, experienced travelers advise coming here in the spring. Spring is very beautiful here. Everything starts to bloom. Apricot trees bloom in April and it is a beautiful lush bloom. You just drive up to Shimkent and the colors everywhere. And not only apricot blooms, but also alsha, early cherry. And in Jambul, this is still not the case, and for people who want to be the first to post photos of themselves on social networks against the backdrop of blossoming apricots, you need to go to Shimkent, and you will be in popularity. By the way, do not forget that you can easily find the latest news and vivid photos from our expedition in the social media by the hashtag across the Kazakh land. Well, we continue to roam the ruins of the ancient city. At the beginning of the 13th century, Otara was part of the empire of Khorasm Shark. Thousands of troops were sent here, whose task was to protect the northern borders of the empire. In 1218, this territory, the city of Otura, became part of the Khorasm, headed by Mohammed. So he was conquered. He was put up by the head of the city, a close relative on the maternal line in Alchik or in Turkic Kaigan. In the same year, the authorities made a fatal mistake. It determined not only the sad story of Otara, but also the course of history as a whole. From the history school course, we all remember the heroic defense of the city during the Mongol invasion. In 1218, Genghis Khan sent a trade caravan here. The ruler Inal Khan, Aka Kayu Khan, at the direction of Khorasm Shah Khamed, violated all laws of hospitality and executed all merchants and ambassadors. This was the main reason for the beginning of large-scale dramatic Mongol conquests through Central Asia. The enemy took Otarar only because the traitor opened the gate. The Mongols wiped out the once great city throughout the county. Even being in captivity, the ruler Kai Khan did not bow his head before the conqueror of Eurasia. He was cruelly executed. The gullet with molten silver was melted. To this day, historians argue about the act of Inalchi Khan and cannot come to a common opinion. Some believe that the execution of the arrived ambassadors was quite natural for the Moors of that time. Others, on the contrary, will not find excuses. Otara crisis was the result of a violation of international norms, the killing of the ambassador. Prior to this, Mohammed twice sent an embassy to Chinggis Khan. And he was glad that economic, political and cultural ties would be established. There is one more version of the catastrophe that began. Among the Mongolian caravan drivers were traitors who unleashed a dangerous game. From 500 people, 449 people were killed. After that, Genghis Khan did not immediately attack. He sends the ambassador a second time, and he was killed. And a year later, in the fall of 1219, Genghis Khan began a siege of the city. And it was a direct proclamation of war against Khorasm. Today there are still more questions than answers, and only a thorough study and research can clear things up. 
По счетам, в Атрария может быть жить... The second question, according to estimates, 15,000 people could live in Otera. And they say that the army of Khorezm Shark was 60,000. Do you know what it is? How were they placed there? This is also a question. And somewhere there is truth and untruth, but 15,000 people on the citadel could not just accommodate. Therefore, you need to be thin, careful. Archaeological material says that there could not be such a grand battle. Dear viewers, please don't forget about our photo competition. You can take a photograph in the same places we travel to and share it in the social media with the hashtag across the Kazakh land. You can win a gift from our channel. Ready? Go! Many believe that after the battle with the Mongols, Otara disappeared forever from the face of the earth. However, this is not the case. 30 years after the tragic events, the city was revived again. Those traces of fire may not all belong to the Mongolian invasion, because Shakristan and Rabat are practically undestroyed. Only parts of the citadel where the ruler lived had been burned down. In some places, the outer walls had not been touched. The legendary Timur the Lame or Tamil Lame spent his last days in Otara. In 1405, he was planning to march on China with his 200,000 strong army, but the battle never happened. In February of the same year, Timur died. The details of his death were never fully revealed. The most common version of the death of the mighty commander is that he was crossing the Sirdaya River in winter. The ice was thin and it broke. Tamerlane fell into the freezing water, got a terrible cold and died a week later. Emir's body was secretly sent to Samarkand. A fight for power in his grandiose legacy erupted among his successors, bringing the empire of Timur the Lame down. Between 1465 and 1718, Otara was revived and grew into a large city. However, in the middle of the 17th century, it was destroyed once and for all during the devastating Jungar invasion. Some scholars suggest that another reason could be that at the end of the 17th century, the Sirdayar River changed its course thereby cutting off the water supply to the city. People had to leave or to run. More than a century ago, archaeological excavation began in Otara. Research continues today. Most of the city is forever destroyed, but what's left is breathtaking. You can see the streets of ancient Otara, ancient mosques. On the territory of the Rabat, there are the famous baths. Baths were not only a bathing place, they were places where people socialized, shared the latest news, had important discussions, exchanged gifts. According to archaeologists, there was a huge palace in the center of the city, with mosques and a caravan sarai built around it. The city had an advanced water supply and sewage system. A great amount of pipes found here serve as proof. The ruins of no other medieval city were as well preserved as the remains of the ancient Otara on the territory of modern Kazakhstan. We know that here there was a large mosque belonging to the 14th, 15th centuries, which was called a Juma Mosque. 
Archaeologists found its remains. Satellite images show the traces of fortifications, proving that Ortara was not a single city here. It was a part of a large settled community consisting of 40 medieval cities, including Jader, Altin Tube, Aktube, Shikshi Maidan, Maidan Kuik. They constituted the Ortara Oasis. Today we can only guess how the Turkic civilization could have flourished had it not been for Genghis Khan's invasion. The war not only slowed down the development of the region, but also the unification of the Turkic tribes into a single nation. Southern Kazakhstan is rich for historical sites and the quickly developing infrastructure allows the visitors to travel here freely. This part of Shimkent and Turkestan are rich for architectural monuments. Ortara, as a historical center, has been attracting not only Kazakh archaeologists but also foreign specialists for many years. Much of the work on the development of the region began in the 1960s and continues to this day. Between 2001 and 2004, the UNESCO conducted a research as part of the revival of the ancient Ortara program. The research is a long-term project. Ortara is open for visitors. Some of the artifacts found are carefully mothballed so that the tourists could see the ancient city site. Many local travel operators offer tours to this area. The routes include Turkestan, the mausoleums of Koja Akmet Yasawi and Aristan Baba. The prices vary between 10,000 and 100,000 tenge. You can also travel to Ortara on your own. However, you should keep in mind that the road to the settlement runs across the dusty steppe and not many car owners are ready to give a ride to Ortara. We receive lots of young tourists, school and university students. They often just want to see these places. But I would like the visitors to dig deeper. To ask questions during the tours, to learn more. I want this route to serve as a starting point for further immersion into history. As part of the state program on modernization of Kazakhstan's identity, the authorities are planning to create the necessary tourism infrastructure to ease the travel to Ortara. Kazakh Minister of Culture and Sports, Aristan Bek Mukamedi has recently laid the foundation stone of the future tourist information center here. <laughs> It is very important to show the beautiful places of Kazakhstan to the world. These expeditions are very interesting. The local people should cooperate with the foreign tourists and be welcoming and respectful to them, because visitors help popularize these historical sites as interesting tourist destinations. I hope this expedition will be fruitful. There are lots of beautiful places in Kazakhstan. We need to show these places to the world. This is our common goal and we must achieve it. Today we visited one of the most ancient medieval cities of Kazakhstan, Ortara. If you are interested in learning the history of the medieval cities of Kazakhstan, you can also visit the city of Taraz, the settlements of Karamegan, Sairam, Talkiz, Kayalik and Sauran. These historical monuments deserve special attention. While we continue our journey, for more updates follow us in the social media with the hashtag Across the Kazakh Land. See you soon!